Hello, this, will, this is the uh, 12th in a series of lectures from the 7th edition of Principles of Biochemistry by Albert Leninger. Uh, today we'll be discussing enzymes. This will be an introductory talk. We will address uh, specific enzyme systems and more particularly the uh, linear kinetics of, uh, of catalysis and the equations that have been built up around this particular topic. Uh, but today we're going to be looking at uh, nomenclature exclusively to uh, make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, enzymes are the bioorganic means of achieving uh, catalytic change. A catalyst, by definition, is any entity which lowers activation energy in a chemical reaction. In organic systems, oftentimes this is done by using a, a, a small amount of metal, whether it's magnesium or uh, less commonly iron, uh, but in this uh, particular instance we have uh, uh, bioorganic molecules of various sizes and these are called enzymes. So two conditions for life are uh, postulated. Um, the first condition is that you have self-replication, a living organism, uh, and I not, don't, do not really put viruses in this category because they're more, as we like to say, chemical in a box. But everything else uh, has the capacity for self-replication, and this replication uh, has to have a certain amount of fidelity. And the second major condition for life is that uh, the uh, organism has catalysis of reactions and uh, control of energy concerns. So when we talk about catalysis, we're talking about rapid conversion of potential energy sources. Uh, as stated earlier, the, uh, the process of having a living organism uh, conducts uh, it is uh, possessed by a, a constant uh, concern with uh, surrounding entropy uh, considerations. So there has to be an expenditure of energy to uh, maintain an uh, ordered system in an open uh, universe. Uh, one particular prototype for enzyme study in history is fermentation. Uh, this goes back uh, uh, for millennia, and fermentation is an example of an enzyme. Uh, cascade, which results in a particular end product. Nearly all of these are proteins. There are some RNA uh, uh, RNAs which uh, also uh, are utilized in enzymatic capacity, and this has some sort of evolutionary uh, consideration, but what, that's a, a talk for another moment. These enzymes additionally have cofactors, and cofactor is usually a particular metal, and uh, the, cat, the cofactor uh, is a metal, uh, metal ion or oftentimes a metal organic uh, molecule or even a, uh, a coenzyme. So you get two enzymes working together. The uh, enzyme nomenclature, we put the, uh, uh, the suffix uh, uh, ASC, ACE, uh, at the end of the name of the enzyme. And the prefix, and the prefix is usually the substrate, which is a reactant or some sort of class of activity. And by definition, there are six classes. Uh, which uh, are either part of the nomenclature or they are understood uh, as, as process of the process uh, of the reaction. So we have excitoreductases, which are a particular uh, electron transfer. You'll see this in oxidative phosphorylation. Uh, uh, transferases transfer uh, from groups. Uh, hydrolases transfer a group to water. Lyases eliminate the single bond to form a double bond. Uh, this is often uh, uh, prominent in uh, certain uh, bio, uh, uh, bioorganic uh, pathways of uh, uh, catal uh, uh, catabolic reactions where you're breaking down substances to form energy uh, with water and carbon dioxide as byproducts. Isomerases uh, have transfer within a group, and ligases join and form single bonds. This is another representation of it right here, oxidoreductases. Uh, or transfer electrons, hydride ions, or, or protons. Transferases are group transfer reactions. Hydrolases, again, hydrolysis reactions, which transfer functional groups to water. Lyases are cleavage of, uh, of carbon bonds, of uh, carbon oxygen bonds, of carbon nitrogen bonds, or other bonds by elimination, being double bonds or rings, in addition of, or addition of groups to double bonds. Isomerases uh, maintain the same chemical structure, but there are transfers of groups within the molecules to yield isomeric forms. And finally, ligases uh, form, and they're pretty much the anti 
uh, 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 carbon sulfide, carbon oxygen, and carbon nitrogen bonds by condensation reactions coupled to cleavage of ATP or similar cofactor to drive the uh, reaction. So when we talk about the enzyme nomenclature, uh, conceptually uh, organism, organisms have uh, substrates which, uh, which is the reactant uh, moving in space with uh, the uh, orbitals uh, uh, in in, uh, in arrayed forms, uh, whereas the the ability to get a reaction occurs on getting these substrates to overlap and approximate their orbitals in order to get the electron uh, pair transfer in order to facilitate the chemical reaction. What the enzyme does is <clears throat> essentially bring these substrates into apposition with each other, and this lowers the activation energy. On the enzyme, we have the active site, and that's where the particular reaction takes place between the substrates, and the end molecule is called the product. So we have S as the substrate, P as the product. There's a transient complex, which is the intermediate state of reaction. Um, we, we postulate this as part of the kinetics. It is uh, an entity which uh, is uh, eliminated in mathematical uh, equations, but it, it does form an intermediate and can further break down a reaction into, an, into a, a two-step procedure, with the first step culminating in the transient product, uh, complex. The second step is the complex uh, uh, producing the products. Uh, catal uh, catalyst is affects the rate of reaction, but not its equilibrium state, and lowers the free energy reaction. This is what the enzyme does. That's what any catalyst does. And the activation energy is lowered. It is the difference between the energy levels of the ground state and the transition state. So when we look at the, uh, this, uh, this uh, process, uh, we have the ground state, which uh, is your substrate. The uh, free energy that's occurring increases uh, until you get to the transition state, and then it drops down to a lower energy with the ground state. This is the uh, delta G, the Gibbs free energy that occurs in the process of going from the substrate to the product. And <clears throat> the total change over uh, from the ground state is, the, is this magnitude here, and the delta G of the reaction is right here at the end point of the product. So the reaction coordinate progresses from left to right from the substrate to the product, and these are the changes in the uh, free energy that occur. We talk about the reaction intermediate, which is these are substructures occurring in the process of a chemical reaction. And the rate limiting step is the step in reaction with the highest activation energy. The activation energy is a barrier to spontaneous reaction. So you can get a spontaneous reaction, but you still have to have the activation energy. and the, uh, the uh, enzyme lowers this activation energy, but to uh, again you have to uh, 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 sometimes you have an, have an in, you have to have an input of energy in order to make facilitate this step to occur. Enzymes enhance the rates by anywhere from five to seventeen orders of magnitude, and we talk about an equilibrium state that occurs between the substrate and the product, with the equilibrium constant uh, equivalent to the concentration of the product over substrate uh, at equilibrium. So these are discrete concentrations that occur for both of these entities, and that defines equilibrium constant. When we look at the, the uh, Gibbs free energy of the reaction, we make delta G equal to minus uh, the R uh, times the temperature natural log of the equilibrium constant, where R is a gas constant. These, this is the number. And the standard uh, temperature at Kelvin is 298 degrees uh, Kelvin, which is equivalent to 25 degrees centigrade. Delta G is inversely proportional to the product formation. So the higher this number is, the lower your product. The lower this number is, the greater the product formation occurs. And we also talk about the rate of reaction, where V is the velocity. So when we look at the velocity, this is going to be, by definition, the amount 
of substrate that reacts per unit time. Oftentimes we'll talk about this being the number of molecules that transfer uh, transformed in, in a minute. Uh, K is a rate constant, and uh, well, these are in units of T, which are in seconds. So I'll take that back. It's actually uh, the, uh, the, the rate constant is uh, units per second, usually moles per second. So <clears throat> this is a, 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 an equation that occurs. And when we talk about first order reactions, we're looking at uh, one mole of substrate. If there's a second order, if there's a second substrate involved, then we talk about a second order reaction. That's the powers to which these uh, numbers are. So this is one, this is one, it's a second order reaction for two reactants. The specificity of binding site was thought historically to be a lock and key mechanism, uh, but uh, not uh, quite that. Uh, it is a, uh, the transition site requires breaking of weak bonds. So as I stated earlier, when you're trying to approximate the uh, substrate reactants with overlap of the, uh, of the uh, peripheral orbitals, which are usually uh, the D orbitals in biological systems, you can have transient covalent bonds form. It's not quite a lock and key mechanism. It's not the way to visualize that, uh, because if you have perfectly bound substrate, it would not necessarily proceed in reaction. You actually have to have a, a, different, uh, a different process going on, which uh, relies on the energy. Uh, uh, intermediates that occur earlier in the process. So the enzymes have to be complementary to the transition state. The, uh, the full array of molecular binding lowers the activation energy. So this is a very complex uh, process that occurs and uh, the enzymes by in generally are large molecules. They have to possess a spectrum of weak interactions to achieve its function. So it's a whole spectrum of uh, molecular interactions, uh, transient uh, covalent bonds, van der Waals forces, necess the necessity of having ions, and even uh, coordination uh, bonds with uh, nearby metals, magnesium, iron, for example, in order to get uh, these uh, the reactants to uh, approximate each other. So, and for specificity, we this is a, a more general term, but we say that the substrate structure has an absolute complement to the binding site. This means that you have an enzyme that may represent or recognize the, the R configuration of a molecule, but not its stereoisomer, which is S, or vice versa. What are the barriers to reaction? One is, of course, the entropy reduction. The, the trend is to increase entropy, so reducing the entropy is what happens when you are uh, creating increased order in the system, and this is not the way that uh, systems want to go. So there has to be an, en en uh, an energy expenditure in order to get this reduction and get the molecules in proximity. Also, as, as, the, as the substance reacts, there's desalvation. These uh, substances are surrounded by water molecules, and water molecules, by necessity, have to eliminate their association with the sol or with the uh, sub substrate as the substrate to interacts with the uh, enzyme in question. You also have induced fit to in express functional groups. You have constituents, R groups, that are on the amino acids or whatever substance that you are uh, addressing with the enzyme. And there has to be room for those, those groups to, uh, to act. And the functional groups have to be exposed and be able to uh, react and respond to. So a lot of times when you have inhibitors, you actually have blocking of these sites, and that this is another barrier to the reaction. And then finally, the alignment of functional groups. The functional groups have to uh, align themselves so that those orbitals do, in fact, react. And finally, when we talk about uh, catalytic reaction groups, there's acid-base catalysis, uh, proton transfers are mediated by weak acid-base interactions. So the, uh, in, in the, these have various strengths of, of reaction, but oftentimes the ionic amino acids, glutamine, aspartate, lysine, arginine, to some extent cysteine, uh, uh, all possess these abilities to uh, act as uh, acid-base uh, acid uh, actions. 
to some extent, histidine does it. It's harder for serine and uh, particularly three in the uh, tyrosine rather, which uh, is, a, is a hydroxyl coupled to a benzyl group, uh, a phenyl group. And this phenyl group, uh, the, the, uh, the electrons tend to dissipate more here. But in this area, these can form very nice uh, uh, bonds uh, or, uh, or ionic uh, pairs with uh, their, their antecedents, aspartate to a negative uh, uh, base, uh, arginine or lysine or what have you, glutamate, uh, glutamate to either of these two. For covalent catalysis, the covalent bond is formed in the transition state. I've addressed this. And again, for metal ion catalysis, that metal ion will participate in redox, reduction oxidation reactions, and electron transfer. So that's basically a brief discussion of the chemistry involved, and we'll be discussing some of the uh, kinetic uh, aspects of this uh, in the, the next uh, talk. Uh, thank you very much.